Hello, I'm Fraser Christian. Welcome to episode two of Living Long Term in the Woods and what it really takes to be comfortable living outside. If you watched the first episode, it's covered building the hazel sapling shelter or gypsy bender as I call it. We covered this in the first episode, picking the spot where it is now and how to construct this. It's getting really warm. Like I said in the first episode, we're coming into summer. We need to get this really up and running before we, the rain comes so we can sleep in it and then improve it by winter. So the shelter's frame is up. I need to go and get a tarp to cover that. Um, before I go and do that, I'm gonna build the bed because I realized that if I put the tarp on, it's not gonna be so easy to film me constructing the bed. Okay, so we'll build the bed before the tarp goes on, but I'm getting thirsty. There's a spring line right behind us. The hills go up this way behind the camera and it flows down. We're in a lovely sort of high spot here where it's nice and dry. But you can see all this greenery to the right of me down there. And that runs down eventually to a spring that flows into a stream. We've walked back up and the head of it's just there. It's just a little tiny seep over the ground. And what I want to go and do now is with the folding shovel, Okay, we're gonna go and dig what I call a gypsy well, or it's a small hole, a meter or half a meter, just to where the flow of the spring comes off. Okay, and hopefully the spring or the water under the grain is gonna seep into this hole and that's gonna stop it collecting any debris. I'm at the head of the spring, we're really lucky here. I can see it coming out of source, so I haven't got to travel back inland to find out if there's any contaminants in it. But dig in the gypsy well or the small hole, I say a, a metre or half a metre from any flowing source. As long as that grain's not contaminated, that should filter out any contaminants. It's a bit like a large water filter, I suppose. It has to seep through all of that grain before it floods and comes into our pit. So we're going to go off now. I'm going to show you how to dig this gypsy well. So there's a lovely little spring here. It's only just flowing about a centimeter over the ground. So as long as I can dig level with this ground, hopefully we'll get some seepage into it. And it's quite, it's quite soft here anyway, as you can see. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna dig it. Oh yeah, it's lovely and soft. About half a meter square, which is gonna be only a couple of shovelfuls. And then hopefully this, uh, fill up when I return with the tower pulling I'll have a water source luckily we've already got a water source there if I was wanted to have a drink I can just by making a small scrape just in there and putting my mug into it but going forward we're going to want water for cooking, washing, and drinking. So, as soon as I get level with this spring, it should start to seep, and I'll just put the soil to one side of me. A few tree roots. This is why you want a really good shovel. Like most of you, we've all bought cheap tools before and they're okay for one or two jobs or they get you out of trouble. But this spade is gonna have a lot of a lot of work. So Few roots here. Just axe for a few of these roots. 
Yeah, you can see it's getting squishy in there already now. So, that's it nearly. That's deeper than the, than the flood adjacent to it. So we should start seeing some sort of movement in a minute. Just going to tidy it up now. Just try and dig the walls straight down as possible. Get rid of a few of those uh, roots. And what we're down to now, beyond this soil, you'll be able to see in a minute, is a grey clay. And this grey clay, I'm going to start putting it separately in a minute. And some limestone there as well. And that grey clay will be just what you want for making a fireplace for possibly some pottery. There you go, it's starting to go grey. And there's a piece of the limestone. There's another root. The beauty of this well is it doesn't need to be that deep. We're already into a water source, right? It's not like we're actually digging for water. Remember, it's more just like a collection port or a water filter. There you go, and you can see the grey clay there now. Be careful, there's not any flint in it. Be careful, take a bit up. There you go. Lots of sand in it as well. I'll give that a go. Try making some pots and firing some pots. But that's going to be enough to use as lagging around our flue pipe. We'll make wood burners or we'll to seal up drums. So two resources in one. Right. I've probably sealed that bit of the bank there now, where it was starting to flow. And if I don't get any joy, let's push that down in there a little bit, I can save that for later. If I don't get any joy, I'm gonna do a small channel to come down into this to stop filling it. So that's about as deep as a spade handle now. Uh, it's solid, the clay down there. I don't know if we're gonna get any runoff into it. I don't know if the ground's going to be so dense, that clay, that it's not going to run off. So what we're probably going to end up doing with this, I say we're really up high at the head of the spring, is digging a small channel down through there, just to see we can speed the process up a little bit. So all we'll do is we'll just put a small, small, small sort of channel in there. Hopefully though, every negative is a positive outside. So the negative that we can, I'll use that nice stone there to clean the spade. The negative that the, it's not gonna run from the spring. All I've done now is bank that, probably bank that soil up there. It's caused a bit of a dam. But the negative that we can, it's not gonna seep through the clay hopefully means that once we've got it to fill up in here it's not going to empty out either and there we go that didn't take much a little bit deep up The only disadvantages with this, it does rain and you are further down the spring line, 
you're going to get loads and loads of silt washing into it or coming in through the flow. That's another advantage of the gypsy weld, it doesn't build up with silt. But we're right up, up high here. There's not much chance of any rain for a while. Famous last words. Hopefully not before I get the tarp on anyway. There you go. There you can see it's running in lovely. It's only a little trickle. I suppose that's going to take a while to settle as well once that flows in and we'll see. What we could even do to keep it flowing so it's not stagnant water, we could dig another trench out back into the spring like that. So we're just going to put a little bit of a U-bend into it, just creating a little bit of a reservoir. So that's our water source hopefully sorted now. Should be able to get a mug in there in another hour or something. Let's get back up anyway and go and construct the bed. Let's get on with the bed. So to construct the bed, we just need two cross poles and then we're gonna put other poles, I suppose, depending on how thick the poles are. If we get them about as thick as your thumb, they'll probably be, have to be about as far apart as your, your fist, I suppose. So I've got some of the resources here. I went and got some hazel poles that have been self-seasoned left in a coppice. We're just going to put those across like that. This is really simple. I can imagine you can get the idea already. And that's the basis of our bed. Now with the rest of the poles that we had earlier that were too short for the rest of the shelter, we're just going to put those across like that. Okay, and cable tie them at each end. Now you just simply lie out poles in their full length and what we'll do is we'll use the thick ends okay and then the thinner ends will go in between the thick ones with once you've let out a few and then measured your bed and again this is just like a single bed it's going to be adequate for your average trekking or camping mat if you want to make it double you just put another pole in here and again just go in amongst these and you can extend it at any point if you get company I suppose depending on your own body weight would it be depending on how strong this will have to be so that's just with the poles I had left over I suppose I'm going to want to go and gather, looking at it, those really thin ends are going to be probably too thin. I've only pu pulled those over that way just to keep them to balance at the moment, but that'll do two. They'll probably all do two actually, so we could say one, two, miss one, miss one, miss one, miss one, miss one. Miss one, that's over half the bed. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six will do once I cut half of the bed. So what, another six. So I'll go off now, gather another six poles. I could say, they're gonna be no thinner than my thumb at their thickest length. Um, once your weight spread over it, you kind of get onto it. These are the sort of strong points you get onto it and move your body weight over. I don't suppose you want to be jumping up and down on any one particular part. And these fixings now, I mean, there's no, there's only one fixing on one side of that pole. What we'll do, rather than bear all of the weight off of this one pole, going along the structure, or that pole that way, if that's too thin, we can always put another pole in and secure it either end. But what we'll do, we'll pinch up these ones and I say, if it, that's not secure enough, we'll put another one on each end to secure it. You'll be able to get it pretty level. The ground's slightly sloping here, as we said before. So that might be a case of wanting to move this side of the horizontals slightly up just to get your bed base. And uh, depending on how tight you've pinched the cable ties, they're normally quite forgiving. And as we come up the poles, the poles get 
narrower, obviously. So you should be able to slide them up or slide that down, depending on how level you need it to be. Right, let's get these ones we've got lined up, sawn off, and I'll show you how to fix them. It's pretty simple. Once I've shown you how to do half of it, I'll go off and get the rest of the poles. Right, kit bag. Pretty simple as I'm sure you can imagine. And we use the longer one of so the cable ties. They're about that long. Just so we can get a good fix in. And we're going, there's a, the poles are like this, and we're going with the cable tie that way. Okay. And you only need one, so you need to stop the mattress sliding really. And again, put your tabs down on towards the floor in case you get a puncture in your airbed. We're just going to make them flush with this end wall in. We'll build a wall up at this end. Uh, I was saying on episode one that we were going to have the fire out this side. It's a little bit close to that tree and I don't want to damage these tree roots here. And a little bit restrictive as well for getting in and out safely out of the door. So we'll probably put the fire down that end. Although that's where the ground slopes off um, down to the spring and the ground's damper down there. We'll build a, probably a stone trivet. Um, we're going off collecting some stones just to make that a good secure kind of um, base off of the bed off of the bed of the wet soil there. Right, let's get these on. Right, you can see how simple that is. And just do the same at the other end. If you haven't got cable ties, you could use cord, obviously. Just makes the job a lot faster. Yeah, they don't need to be very um, secure. It's only literally just to stop them sliding out when you get in and out of bed. Depending on whether they're, how thick they are. Use the saw, the secateurs. Right, that one. Like I was saying before, should be thick enough. And I say we'll start with the thick end and then the thin end, so we kind of e equal the space. So I'm going to do that all the way along. I don't suppose you really need to see how to sort every single pole. So I'll do all of that. Then I'll go off and get any more we need. It's going to be another six to go over the other um, end of the bed there. Then once that's done, we'll go back, uh, look at the gypsy well, see if we've got some water there, which is going to be... Um, a godsend if we have because soon with all this physical work and the heat of the day it's getting really humid now as it's getting into evening I am starting to get really really thirsty uh, although I brought water with me um, it's not going to last forever and hopefully um, once we get the tarp on we've got the bed I'm going to go back get the tarp in a bit the one good thing about the bed that we've got now we've created our first storage area I suppose so underneath there, we're going to put all of our firewood that's going to keep it out of the way. It's going to act as some insulation as well for, for, um, to stop the ground. Um, cold coming up or uh, us losing our body heat down to the ground. Uh, it's a great thing, the bed. You, we could just sleep out in our mat tonight. It's winter, it's summer, it's ever so dry. But once it gets colder, the ground saps your heat away, okay? Air is the best insulation. You know, if you put your hand above the ground like this, feel the temperature, then put your hand onto the ground, you'll notice that unless it's a really hot day or you're somewhere really hot, if you're in a cold climate, the ground is always, you're, it seems apparent that your heat is coming out of your hand onto the ground. So having the bed is not only a good thing to stay warm in the winter, keeps you up off of the deck, any creepy crawlies, any ticks, there's plenty of ticks out here at the moment and we'll uh, look at ways of getting, hopefully keeping those out of our shelter and um, talk about treatments for those as well and other plants that are around the camp and loads of other stuff that's, you know, we're going to come into not difficulties but we're going to have some challenges out here living in the woods that are going to be different than when we're living in a modern environment but nature is really clever early man and early woman wouldn't have been able to live like this unless nature provided everything that we need so we just have to look in the right places and hopefully like I said before 
we'll be able to live out here longer, happier and more peacefully. Right, hi guys, welcome back. Um, obviously it's not summer anymore. If you see behind me, there's no leaves on the trees. I've had a few projects come up in the past between filming the last bit that you've just seen in the summer, um, an off-grid uh, living cabin we had to construct over the last few months and then I had that awful flu uh, during the new year. So apologies for how long it's taken to complete this episode but I've got the tarps now and I've scrounged an old canvas tarp. I said I was going to use just a rubberized tarp but money and finance and these new tarps that have come on the market, these extra tough Yusutsi, or oh, I can't pronounce that unfortunately, you can probably see that if you zoom in. Um, winter camouflage is supposed to be extra tough, really lightweight, and hopefully this is going to go right over and we're going to put this old canvas tarp on which was going to be binned over it first of all just to stop any scratching and abrasion hopefully on the plastic tarp. So here goes. I've got a winter human animal survival challenge coming up any day now so I really need to get this off. I didn't realise the last episode would take so long and appreciate all of you that watched it. I know it was over an hour and this one's going to be probably over half an hour or something by the time I've done it. Um, so I need to get this off the phone. I haven't got that much storage. I'm off grid and film the winter human animal survival challenge next week where we've got six people coming up in the woods with minimal kit to survive. Hopefully. So this is going to be the feds there but if I wanted to, it's just rested on and fixed with a couple of cable ties. Wind's going to change, and if you work out you're in a position where the wind changes constantly, you want that bed more mobile, so we'd actually make that an independent raft so we could pick it up and put it down that side. And hopefully, the plastic top's going to cover both ends, and we can lift one up and have the fire there and a porch there, everyone on that end. And we can also open that end up and close this end down if the wind comes that way and have the fire that way. That's the plan, anyway. So. Looks like a mouse has nested in the uh, in the top, back in the woodshed. Hopefully, just sling it over best you can. Just try and work out what sort of shape this is. Hopefully, I've cut enough to go right over it. Almost like it's going to cover most of it anyway. So, if you're on a budget, it's good to make use of stuff that's going to go into the landfill anyway. And to say this is not going to have to be waterproof, it's going to give us a little bit of insulation and winterizing it. We can use any old bubble wrap, woolen blankets in there. I used an old parachute as the inside before. some time, the weather gets a little bit better. Because I'd left it so long, I've had to replace a few of these poles. But that's the, uh, the 
beauty of a shelter like this. You can keep adding more poles, taking them away. enough for the moment, it's going to cover most of it on one end, pull that along a little tiny bit. Hopefully the plastic top's going to go right over it, I've measured it correctly. Might need to tie that other side down in the wind at the moment. And anything like this, any flaps, just roll them up. And to secure it in the end, the plastic top is going to put cross pole down, roll the tarp up if we need to, stake it down. So I say, this is this make, it's supposed to be super tough, really lightweight. I imagine it definitely lasts, right near it's a few years. And again, get some extra money, buy another stronger one, and go over the top and just keep adding layers. It's all about layers. Insulation. Right, let's have a look. It's definitely long enough that way. Didn't have, didn't have lots of options in the uh, sizes for this, so. You might need to fix it and go the other way, is it? Let's have a look. Yeah, the other way. Take one side down if it's stick one side straight down to the ground, it would take the spare up only on one side. So, maybe that is good. then you've got a small top and you have to leave this open ended, you just have your bed in the middle so the rain don't get you, and then you can have a far at either end. Depends on the other two you want. So, it's not going to shut out either end anyway. Shut that eye render and we'll take it down. We'll leave it open and what I'll have to do is I'll have to move that bed to the middle. But then the bed's in the middle, I can have my fire eye render just on the floor there. Okay. So we'll just leave it down a little bit. Take this side down just for the eyelets. Reaching some of the offcuts of hazel. Grain's a lot softer now, there's one of the things we Doing it for the winter. As the wind's blown this way, I'll try and put as much cover down in the back there. South westerly facing, so most of the weather comes that way. Right, that's it pegged down that side. Now we need to do is take the tension in this way. Again, lift it carefully because you'll have the camera to go all the way along. But it's pretty good this stuff. But it's the framework I wanted to show you in this really that's the important thing, right? Just 
how you don't have to make stuff square. And now it's got lots of support. Now what we can do, we can put logs on this side, or we'll say we can put a long branch along it and anchor it down on the sides. But at least we've got our kit in there now. We need to get our kit in there now. We've got somewhere dry. And don't have to, don't have, to have a bed in there. But I say, if you've got it open on both sides, put your bed in the middle, and like a fire. Other side, there's no wind. So, that's the tarp up. I'm really sorry I didn't continue that on the last one, but it would have been over two hours. Stake this down all the way along. That's weatherproof now, and I say, wind's blown this way, like the fire at that end, wind's blown this way, like the fire at this end, and it's open at both ends, put your bed in the middle. But, even if now we didn't have a top to go with both sides, eventually, here, with not too much resources, we could get some more hazel poles. I can imagine we'd probably make quite an easier cob wall just with mud. It's gonna not take any weather at the inside, okay? Or if not, we get some more extra bits of tarp, we put some doors on the end but that's the basic construction and how to get it over hopefully all you need to do now is light a fire and live in it and hopefully i'll get to do that one day but thanks for watching as i say really sorry about the pause and the delay and the change of scenery and continu continuity but hopefully keep watching there's going to be lots more videos um hopefully not quite as long um, and I'll be able to upload them and say I live off grid. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Keep it real. Stay safe. Thanks very much. I'm Fraser Christian.